Indeed, I had to go and Google it, and I thought it was a fake thing. I'm like, wait, Victor, critical anthropologist, is there such a thing? I, t I thought a lot about what Maggie's job could be, and actually, I gave Karen Rinaldi a job when we were talking. I said, you can figure out exactly what kind of degree this is and where she got it and so on. And so she did some of that research and thought about it because I wanted her to have a degree that encompassed her uh, giving nature, uh, the fact that she loves to enable other people to do their best work, which is a kind of uh, perhaps outbranch of a maternal instinct, but at the same time, her pragmatism and the fact that she's always had to take care of herself and she was organizing the bills by the time she was 12 and she's that kind of person. So she's really one of those rare souls that artists really need who can organize them. And that works great for her on one level, but then it becomes somewhat of a de detriment because not really wanting to use her, John sort of ends up using her a little bit because she becomes the person who enables his life. And in a way, that she becomes such a caretaker that uh, their relationship starts to get out of balance and out of whack. And Juliana Moore as the uh, <laughs> quirky, crazy uh, Danish anthropologist, was she part of Rinaldi's uh, story or did you create it? Uh, that character was originally French, but she was definitely in Rinaldi's story. Yeah, and Juliana Moore. If you don't mind me saying it, she is the grown-up version of the woman in The Big Lebowski. Oh, that's funny. I mean, I have to say, I, I, I just adore her performance in The Big Lebowski, and I'm so happy when people compare it, this performance to that, because, um, I don't know, I think we need more Maude. <laughs> I said, oh, this is what she would become. She would become a, you know, fictor critical anthropologist <laughs> after she got the baby in the Big Lebowski. I normally do not think of an audience before I start work. I, I really work for myself and think, well, everyone will be, you know, I hope everyone's interested in this and maybe they will, maybe they won't be. Um, I think I was more aware making this film by the time we started really getting close to shooting th that I had a feeling that a lot of people would connect to it because I knew that these concerns, even though it's a rarefied world and these are people, uh, talking about ideas that not everybody's talking about. Their situation in life is so basic that really anybody that's starting to have relationships that's somewhat of a grown-up can connect. And in fact, I mean, the interesting thing is that very young people, like 60 and 17-year-old girls and, and guys, have said, you know, I'm really connecting with this. I really see this because they see it from the child's point of view, looking at divorce and looking at the blended families and looking at the chaos of love today, which is, you know, the rule books have been thrown out and we're on our own, we're inventing things as we go along. And so I guess it's a sort of a modern love story in that sense. Yeah, I mean, it's very much a love story to, uh, with New York uh, and an ode to New York. Um, and it is also about being a female now, being a person now. What are men and women to each other now that we don't necessarily need each other economically or even to procreate? What is that? It's choice. And that's more exciting, but also more confusing.